Welcome to another episode of Your Money Mindset, guiding you to achieve lasting financial freedom and peace of mind. I'm John McGregor. We got a really important episode here. It's an issue that's affected a, uh, affected a lot of people and continues to do so today. Because so many of us are uh, face this dilemma, this personal dilemma with, with people we know and we love, and it's something that has destroyed a ton of relationships along the way. So make sure you hit the bell below to subscribe. All right, let's get into it. And by the way, even if this hasn't affected you, it's highly likely it will sooner or later or in the future. <clears throat> so a little backstory. So there's a guy I used to work for <clears throat> early in my financial career, and we became very, very close friends. He was a very successful financial advisor and had a very large practice, and he was, <clears throat> excuse me, very well respected in the industry. But for whatever reason, I still don't know what happened to this day. He was forced to leave the organization. He was a bit of a goofball and, and very immature, so maybe maybe that's what was responsible for, for his ultimate de de demise. But in the end, we stayed in touch and maintained a friendship as he bounced around at various jobs that, frankly, he couldn't keep. And I guess his wife had enough and she ultimately filed for divorce. And my dear old friend needed money for the attorney. And I have no idea how many people he reached out to, but I'm, I'm sure I was one of the first on the list. And he initially wanted $5,000 to help cover his legal fees, which I agreed to loan him. I told him I would only do it on the condition that we had an ironclad <clears throat> signed agreement. And he agreed to that. This agreement had specific terms, interest rates, and penalties for late payment. And at the time, I foolishly thought I was protected because I had this signed document. He then came back with another request for another $5,000. And because he was such a close friend, I said yes, but to only half of that. So all in, I was in for $7,500. Many months later, as my outgoing emails and phone calls went unanswered, I knew something was up and I knew it was going to be hard to get my money back, sadly. So to make a long story short, he basically ignored all my requests for payment and basically just disappeared on me. The good friend flaked. I still maintain a connection on, uh, with him on Facebook, so I was able to witness all the things he was buying and the fun he was having, the vacations, basically with my money, right? While he stiff-armed me for payback. It was extremely disappointing. And to think, here was a very successful executive at a major financial in institution who didn't have the ethical spine to pay me back a lousy $7,500. I had an attorney send a, a couple of letters, which I'm sure he just laughed at and filed in his trash can. And because he lived in a different state, it would have been really difficult for me to track him down through small claims court or, or some other measures. I actually feel sorry for his kids. I mean, it's just pretty disgraceful as far as I'm concerned. But with mistakes come learning, right? And that's what my book was all about. The top 10 reasons the rich go broke, which is all about learning from your mistakes. So now, when friends and family come to me for a loan, I'm far more prepared for that situation than I was than what I was because I went through it. And I hope you will be as well after this video. You know, according to, to a survey by Bankrate, 60% of Americans have helped friends or family members by lending them money and expecting to get paid back. And almost 40% lost money. And by the way, do your friends a favor and send this out because you could help a lot of people in your life as well with this situation. And let me be clear, I am not saying you shouldn't loan people money, not at all. That is not the point of this video. People are struggling today more than ever because of the virus and the job situation and, and of course the lockdown and, and now more and more people need help. What I'm saying is you need to prepare yourself for when this request comes in so it doesn't destroy you financially and your relationship with that person you're loaning money to, because that can obviously happen. So here are some lessons you need to incorporate in the event you are asked for a personal loan. Number one, do not lend more money than you can afford or afford to lose. This should be obvious. You've got to take care of yourself and your family first. Do not allow guilt or other pressures to determine whether you lend money to someone you know. It, look, if you're struggling financially or feel concerned that the person is not of high standards or or won't repay the loan, then simply say, I'm sorry, I can't do it right now. End of story. And if they get mad or, 
or if that causes a rift in your relationship, then perhaps they weren't a, they weren't a friend in the first place. But if you do want to help, but can't afford what they want, then simply offer a smaller amount. You don't have to take their, ter their terms of the loan. After all, it's your money, right? Okay, number two, make sure you get it in writing. Your agreement should include your, your name and the borrower's name and the date of the loan was granted, the amount of money being lent, the minimum monthly payments you require, uh, the payment due date, the interest rate you're charging, and consequences for de defaulting on that loan. And that could require collateral the lender is putting up for the loan. And make sure you both sign it. And for larger loans, you may want to have an attorney put this together. Otherwise, there are a multitude of free templates you can find online. And lastly, number three, prepare yourself not to be paid back. I know. If you go into this financial transaction thinking you're loaning money to somebody and you're, you're going to make some interest on it, and you may, be, you may be very disappointed in the end, and this could in fact end your relationship as it has for so many. Although I said you should get this in writing, that's not a foolproof way to protect yourself in the event of a default or non-payment. Remember my earlier story? I had it in writing. Even though you have it in writing and the person refuses to pay you back, you still need to take that to court and fight it through the system. Even if you want, that's if you wanted to do that. And that's not a fun process. Look, I once had to sue my landlord many years ago for my rent deposit after, and after four no-shows in court, yes, four, she finally decided to appear in court. I ultimately had to go to mediation and in the end I walked away with half of my deposit. And I was lucky I got that because she had the money. Many times you sue people in small claims court and you win, but they don't have the money to pay it back, which is just another problem. Look, Every loan request is different based on who's asking, right? Every situation is different and trust can quickly disappear when money is involved. But one solution for certain situations and assuming you can afford the loan and the relationship is important to you is to simply offer a percentage of what they're asking. Go through the agreement process, but in the end, assume it's lost money or a gift. This could help minimize stress, protect the relationship while still helping someone out in need. Well, I hope that helps. Again, make sure to hit the bell below and subscribe. And I would love, love to hear your personal loan stories and any ideas you have in this situation. Check out my website. I've got a ton of free resources you can use immediately to start your journey to financial freedom and peace of mind. Until next time, upward and onward. Take care.